Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we have So You Want to Play Goths as you guys have voted in the community poll I put out yesterday on YouTube. So very nice. Thank you all for voting. Uh, goths won. I think Byzantines was second. I'll get to Byzantines probably next week. We'll see. Uh, but yeah, today we're talking about Goths and if you guys are new to the series, it's basically just me going through a civilization, in this case the Goths, and uh, given a theoretical rundown of how the Civ should be played, what it's good at, what it's bad at, and then actually running a game, me versus another you know, pro player, top player, and, uh, and seeing how the practical side of things lines up with the theory and trying to execute the theory in, in a real game pretty much. So uh, it's it's great series for those who want to pick up the gods or pick up any of these civs. Uh, it should give you all the knowledge you need to get into the uh, into ranked yourself and start practicing uh, with, with uh, any particular civ. So with that said, let's just hop right into the theory here and take a look at what gods are good at. So gods here, let me just get the overlay set up. They're very nice. Uh, goths here are classified as an infantry civilization. Uh, their first bonus is that infantry costs minus 20% in Dark Age, minus 25% in Feudal Age, minus 30% in Castle Age, and 35 in Imp. Uh, so constantly getting cheaper for their infantry. Uh, infantry has plus 1 attack versus buildings per age, starting from Feudal Age. Uh, villagers plus 5 attack versus Wild Boar, and Hunters carrying plus 15 meat. Loom can be researched instantly, but you still have to pay the 50 gold. Uh, and then lastly, plus 10 population in Imperial Age. So you'll notice that they have five bonuses here for the Civ, which is uh, not uh, all Civs get five. Uh, most Civs get four, maybe even sometimes three. Uh, but Goths don't have the best bonuses. So they have a bunch of bonuses, but again, they're all kind of the small um, advantages and nothing too uh, crazy. The unique unit is the Husk Roll, and we'll talk about that later. It's actually a very important part of their uh, of their uh, of their kit. Uh, a unique text here is going to be Anarchy and Perfusion. Uh, Anarchy lets you create Husk Rolls at the barracks, and Perfusion makes your barracks work 100% faster for that famous Goth spam. Uh, their team bonus is that barracks work 20% faster. Again, this stacks with this, so you get some crazy uh, fast working barracks, um, and uh, and their late game is is ridiculous. Uh, but anyway, those are the bonuses. Now let's take a look at the tech tree. Right off the bat, I can tell you that infantry is going to be a big part of this uh, civilization's kit. So if you haven't seen the Goths ever or you're new to Age of Empires, um, uh, Goths is definitely um, uh, more of a one-trick civ, and they kind of have to play infantry uh, to succeed more often than not, although they have some other decent options as well, and I'll, I'll talk about them. So... Uh, their archery range to start things off. They have the crossbow, elite skirm, and cav archer. Uh, they do get heavy cav archer and hand cannon here, but they're missing a thumb ring, parthen tactic, and arbalest. So this archery range is really going to be only good for castle age and early castle age. Late castle, your uh, crosses will fall off, and uh, you always have the, uh, the option for hand cannon near an imp. The barracks is fully stacked. They don't get supplies, but they get the cheaper infantry. Uh, that bonus applies to both halves and champions. And also Condottiero if you're teaming an Italian player, for example. I uh, thought I'd mention it. They get squires, but not arson because they get uh, the infantry attack per age on building. So kind of replaces that. Um, their stable now is going to be pretty decent. They have Hussar, Bloodlines, and Husbandry. And they have Cavalier, but they're missing a very important tech in the Blacksmith, which is plus four armor on the Cav, making their Cavalry really good for Castle Age. Definitely fine, nothing wrong with it uh, in Castle Age, but in Imp, it's definitely lackluster, especially against Archer Civs. Um, uh, their Siege is pretty mediocre. They have the Bomber Cannon, Heavy Scorpion, Onager Cap Ram, not bad. Uh, we'll see if they have Siege Engineer. I actually can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, we'll figure that out. Uh, their Blacksmith here... They have uh, two missing techs here, plate burning armor and plate mail armor. Now, you might think it's weird that they're missing plate mail armor, uh, considering they're an infantry civ, but this is really just a balance move. Because their infantry is already being spammed out so much, they want to take away the plate mail armor, so at least they don't have the highest quality infantry, and other civs can at least defend with their own. Uh, and also, husk scrolls don't actually need this. The husk scrolls, their unique unit, has already a ton of pierce armor. We'll get into that a little bit later. Their navy, is, their navy is pretty average, though. Nothing too crazy happening here. Uh, I mean, just um, regular stuff, pretty much. Um, you don't really get any bonuses for water, so I don't think it's that good. You're missing Dry Dock and Elite Cannon Galleon, but other than that, you have Galleon, Fast Fire Ship, and Heavy Demo with Shipwright. So you're actually doing pretty well with in terms of tech, but you don't have bonuses, really, for their water, so it's not the best. Um, we are, in fact, missing Siege Engineers, so, yeah, their Siege kind of mediocre. Um, no guard tower and no fortified wall and no stone wall. Yeah, they're missing stone wall and they're missing guard tower onwards. So they're not a very good defensive sieve. 
Um, they really excel in gaining the initiative in Castellage and kind of steamrolling your opponent from there using their infantry. So kind of like the best way to play that, play that. But again, they have some other options like their cavalry is not bad and their archers are not bad in early castle. And Feudal Age, they can play you know pretty much anything maybe with the Man Charm opening because you get the cheaper infantry. Uh, okay, the Husk Grove. Now the Husk Grove has 80 food and 40 gold base, but this is... With the discount of 30% in Castle and 35% in Imperial Age, this gets cut pretty significantly. Uh, so Huskerl is uh, is basically an anti-archer infantry. Has 10 attack and 6 base pierce armor, making it very tanky against crossbow. In fact, you take only 1 damage versus a fully upgraded crossbow in Castle Age. So I actually think the Huskerl is quite, uh, quite strong against those guys, obviously. So definitely something to watch out for. And this is kind of like the main uh, goth units against archer sieves. So... The way I see Goths, and I'll talk about this more in the recap, is that you have the Halberdiers against um, a Cavalry Civ, the Huskerls against Archer Civs, and then you have the Champion, which is what you do uh, against other champions or what you do to take out buildings and to kind of overrun your opponents and destroy their base. So that's kind of like the three infantry uh, units and what they're used for. Obviously, all of them get a discount. Um, regular stuff here, the unique text here, Anarchy and Perfusion. Uh, monks pretty bad. <laughs> you don't really get any good uh, text on the on the monks here. So you really only want to go monks to get relics and maybe help uh, heal up your units in castle age. And yeah, late game they have all the eco text, so nothing to worry about there. And very nice. All right. So overall, how would describe the goths here? Let's go back to this uh, this um, scene here. The goths I would describe them as pretty one dimensional into their infantry. If you're not playing with their infantry you're going to be missing out on so many of their bonuses, so you have to somehow find a way to get into the infantry. However, you don't want to just rush into playing infantry because infantry, by definition, have a lot of weaknesses. They are melee units, and they are very slow. They're not fast-moving, like a cavalry unit, for example. So if you just start the game and think, I'm going to play with only Man at Arms in Feudal Age, only Spearmen in Feudal Age, uh, I'm going to just try to get the castage and make only longswords or pikes or maybe even husk rolls. You might get into some problems and you might get punished. Because if the other guy has archers, he can easily kill your infantry. If he has cav cavalry, he can run around your infantry and therefore you're not getting value from them. Now, I will say goths are really strong in lower levels. Now, lower levels, you c it, can mean, you know, it can mean below 1,000. It could also mean like 1,200, 1,300. Uh, it really just depends on... Um, on how you feel, uh, you know, you feel your particular ELO is playing it. So, uh, what I mean by this is that if you can get away with just going for a fast castle and playing straight into pikemen versus the enemy knights, and if you think that will work for you, that is a good strategy with goths. Um, if you can go straight to castle against archer sips and make husk rolls right away, and you can clear out their archers. If you can do that, if you think you can accomplish that, whatever ELO you're at, then it's a good strategy with the Goths because you go right to their power units, and if you don't fall behind enough in eco, and, and you're fine, you clear up their army and they can't punish you, that's a good strategy. You clear up their army, and then you can just boom from there into your strong late game. However, I will say, at the higher level you go, the more people will know how to punish Goths. The lower levels, they give you time. Again, I'm leaving this vague... So I don't want to attribute what low level means. It could be anything you want. If you feel like you're going to die before you get to your infantry, make other units first. I can tell you right now, at my level right now, if I try to show up with Goths and go straight fast cast on the Husk Rolls, 90% of the time I will get punished and die in Feudal Age. Or at least I will fall behind to the point where the Husk Rolls don't even matter. So I have to play with other units first to then set up the infantry transition later. I'm spending a lot of time on this because it's very important to understand that while the Goths are best at infantry, it's also very predictable because your opponent knows that. Your opponent knows that Goths are good at infantry, so he'll try to pressure you before you can get there. Um, so that, again, just want to re-highlight this, that Goths, infantry is a strong point, but it could also be their biggest weakness if, uh, if you're too predictable with it. So try some other options first. It's okay to open at the top level with, for example, a Drush or Men at Arms, but then you want to kind of switch it up and play with some archers, some, some skirmishers, maybe some cavalry in Castle Age and, and Feudal Age, and then make your way to, uh, to infantry in the, in the late game. But you pretty much always want to end up with infantry in the late game. All right, I've talked a lot. Whew, I need to breathe now. I'm going to get some water, hydrate up, and let's go find the recorded game I have ready for us today. I'm going to be playing against top player Daniel here. I went to the wrong place, so that's going to be pretty interesting. So skirmish. Okay. What, what am I doing? 
Okay, uh, load game. <laughs> That's exactly what I want. I don't edit these videos, by the way, guys. So <clears throat> this is completely raw footage. I'm also a bit short on breath. I'm not sure what that is. I'll take a second to breathe here. Okay, it's loading. Um, I actually have to do... Yeah, okay, perfect. Okay, replays. Um, don't tell me that's gonna... Okay, perfect. So it's Daniel uh, Gothers Berbers. That's the one I want to go into. But before I hop into it, I want to do a quick, quick uh, advertisement for the new build orders I've released. If you guys don't know already, I released build orders for all of my Twitch subscribers. Uh, really nice PDF documents that are set up and meant to help you guys improve at the game. Uh, I just want to give you guys a quick look at what that looks like right now. And I have them ready over here. So let me go ahead and pull those over. Uh, so if you go to the display right now, uh, there it is. So here are the build orders. Uh, I add one new build every month for all my, again, Twitch subscribers. So just to give some incentive to resubscribe and also just to keep it fresh for everyone who, uh, who already knows all, all the ones I put out. So the one I put out this, this week or sorry, this, excuse me, this month, it was Magyar Scouts into Cav Archers just to kind of help you guys get settled in with this new Cavalry Archer change that might, you know, that makes them more competitive, not might, it does make them more competitive. And this is definitely a very consistent uh, strategy that you can do at all levels. So something to consider. And uh, just to give you a little taste of what it's like, we have the editorial pages explaining how to read them. And then here is like a sample build order. I always show the straight archers, so it's not new, but you guys can pause it and, uh, and take it. Or if you guys wanna get access to the full PDF, again, with like 20 builds or something, whatever, 18 or something builds that are here, all you have to do is subscribe to my Twitch stream, join my Discord, and, um, and you can get access to it right away. You have to connect your Twitch with, uh, with Discord and then you'll get access to this uh, nice and easy. So it is behind a paywall, but if you do have Amazon Prime, you can connect Amazon Prime with Twitch and uh, subscribe for free using Twitch Prime uh, on my channel and you get access to these that way as well. Uh, there's also a way to get gifted a sub by being active on my Twitch channel. But again, this is all ways that you guys can get access to this. Um, and um, and uh, yeah, it is just a resource out there if you do want to get better and, uh, and learn some build builders. So just thought I'd let you guys know, those who don't, and uh, well, let's hop into it. Enough talking, Hera, let's go. Okay, very nice. So let's hop into this one here. It's Gossip Berbers. Let me just make sure everything's working here. My scene's looking nice. Scoreboard, it will go down. We don't need that one. Okay, I'm gonna minimize the OBS. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at this one. So as usual, I'm gonna introduce the players here and uh, and then I'm gonna go ahead and commentate from my perspective. I wanna really guys let, let you guys know my thought process and not so much just casting it like a regular game. So I'm playing in blue here as the Goths in the, I guess, north, uh, north corner of the map. And then to the south here, we have Daniel playing in red as the Berbers. He actually went random sip with this one. I obviously picked the Goths. So um, yeah, it's quite an interesting matchup. And I'll explain the matchup as I talk in the early game. So Berbers are really good with the cavalry, but they also have some good archer units, like the Camel Archer Unique Unit. They also have really good uh, hand cannon here. Uh, they, ha they have hand cannon here, and they also have champions fully upgraded. So they have some answers to Goths. They're not a pure cavalry sieve, but chances are Berbers will be going cavalry in the castle age. So something to watch out for for me right off the bat. Goths, we talked about them. Goths are more... Um, you know, pretty one trick infantry long term, but again, I'm not gonna just jump straight into infantry. I'm playing Daniel, he knows how to punish Goths, um, and he's gonna probably pressure me in uh, feudal, probably castle as well, to prevent me from going straight to infantry. And uh, and so for that reason, I probably have to play with some archers uh, or something like that in the mid game, uh, maybe even some cavalry. I, I haven't decided at this point, but I do know I wanna just do something before I go straight into uh, the infantry spam like husk or pike combination or, 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 or run not. So uh, something to consider here right off the bat. Um, okay, so let's take a look at my map and see exactly what's going on. I'm just going about the scouting now, so nothing too crazy. Now, when you wanna look at your map, you have to identify a few things. The first thing is finding all your resources, obviously sheep and boar, that's, that comes first. The second thing is finding out if you can wall easily and if your gold is safe. Right now I have front gold, I'm actually luring a deer because I have pretty fast scouting, I figured why not. My gold is forward and my berries are kind of forward. And look at this, I have a lot of resources in this area. So right off the bat, I can rule out completely. I am not gonna go rush fast castle. No way. No way I can go for a dark hit rush and follow up with a fast castle because I would get pressured. I lose my wood line, I lose my gold and my stones and potentially even my berries if he comes here. So I know I have to play some sort of feudal aid game. 
I also know that I have three woodlands around, which make for some easy walling in the feudal age. So maybe something I can make use of, and then keep my infantry, or sorry, my military, not my infantry, on the front here uh, to defend my map. So that's kind of my plan here. I'm playing against Daniel, and I don't know what he's going to go for. He can do a variety of things with Berbers. They can do scout opening, they can do men at arms, they can do archer opening. I don't know. I'm going to open men at arms. I'm going to go up to Feudal Age on like 22 or 23 pop, probably 23 because I have Goths and they get the Instant Loom. Which, by the way, it's a mistake that I haven't done the Instant Loom yet. You should get it right off the bat if you're playing with Goths from the start. Um, but it was a mistake, I just forgot about it, honestly. So, I always get Loom at the start if you remember with Goths. Sorry, I'm really short on breath. I don't know what's happening here. I hope I'm not like sick or anything. Alright. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Again, I probably should edit these videos, but I don't. So bear with me here a little bit. Uh, okay, so I'm just going about the start. And uh, and yeah, like I said, so <clears throat> I'm going to go with a men arm rush, and then I'm going to adapt to what my opponent's doing. As you can see, I'm just scouting out his map, and I found a berries. I don't know too much right now. My scouting is a bit off. I'm scouting too close to the edges here. So uh, at the moment, I, I don't really have any uh, any idea of what he's doing. I'm going to go men arms simply based on my map and the Civ matchup. Again, the fact that Berbers can open anything and the fact that Goths, you know, generally want to do either Drosh or men arms I decide here to go for men arms because I want to defend my map here, which is quite, uh, quite open. All right, very nice. Just running around now with, uh, with the scouts. Very good. And then the barracks is coming up. As you can see, I'll, I'll queue up Loom here. I actually completely forgot about that tech, so now it's, it's coming in. Very nice. And uh, yeah, pretty pretty stock standard men at arm build over here. I mean, it's the same thing every time, pretty much. Once you guys learn that this game is just, uh, you know, just a, a, a question of can you do the Dark Age consistently and then execute the strategy. I don't want to say this game is simple, but at least the early game is simple uh, because you often get into the same situations depending on which strategy you want to open. So. Yeah, the important thing is just getting a consistent, um, consistent strategy out there and uh, and learning how to nail the dark age or nail the feudal age um, every time. So I'm going 23 pop, and that's like the generic 22 pop because we get instant loom, um, and then I'm gonna go for some uh, some men at arms. So some militia already coming out. Now I don't know what Daniel's doing, and my scouting has been actually quite poor this game. So this is a mistake. I'm, I'm scouting the edge of the map. I really should be scouting the front of Daniel's base here. Especially this area here, because there's a hill, his town center won't be here. Scout that area just to see what he's up to. I, I have no idea what he's up to, so I can't even tell you guys uh, at this point what it is he's doing. And like a doofus, I run into his town center. Yeah, I use doofus. With dumbass, whatever, same thing. Um, I went to his town center to take some damage, but again, I don't know what he's doing, and that's a big mistake. So I'm playing kind of some bl blind action here. Uh, but nonetheless, I decided let's move out. I'm going to go for a fourth men at arm or fourth militia. Just because for Goths, they're cheaper. So if they're cheaper, I feel like, okay, I'll add an extra one just to pack more of a punch. It might end up being a waste, but again, if it's a waste, I'm only uh, you know losing a little bit of resources, not too much. He helps fast at a Feudal Age. I just kind of dance with the scout here, trying not, not to lose too much HP. And yeah, he gets the, up, you know, the better trade, but it's not by much. He's up to HP. All right, so now I know he's got a barracks, but I don't know if he's doing a stable, if he's doing range. I don't think he's doing any infantry, uh, like men at arms or anything like that, and that's probably because he's up against Goths. He knows, you know, he can't really trade against me efficiently because I got the cheaper men at arms. So I'll pick up men at arms and double bid axe here, and, and the first step is just to look for some damage. So I'll look for his wood line here. Looks like it's walled in. I'm gonna wrap around to the berries because that's all I know. If I had known, I'm gonna unfog of war here, but the gold, I could have easily pressured it. But again, you guys, you guys saw that I didn't know, and obviously now we're cheating, but we see the range. I, I didn't know the range was there. I thought maybe he's doing a stable, and that's why you guys see me add in a spearman. And this is a big mistake. I have to, I have to criticize myself, guys. What's right is right, what's wrong is wrong, regardless who's doing it. This is a huge mistake for me. A, I didn't scout properly. I didn't see his gold. I didn't know if he's on gold. And B, I just assumed he's doing scouts and I made spearmen. So I'm gonna waste some eco here doing uh, one or two spearmen. Um, and uh, I waste, you know, obviously a, few, you know, a little bit of resources is cheaper for goths, but still a waste nonetheless. And all I had to do was scout the fact that he was taking gold and I would have saved uh, a little bit of resources on that and potentially, you know, made some skirmishes earlier. But now I'm kind of stuck, not no, not sure what to do, and making Spearman just because I expect him to go scouts. Big mistake for me, again, should be better scouting there, unacceptable. 
All right, he's not gonna let me get in here. Obviously, I do see his, ne uh, you know, his next wood line. At this point, I didn't see that archer, but I'm gonna figure out he's doing archers too. And I think I saw him there. Um, so at this point, I know he's doing archers, and I have a couple options. I have an option to switch into skirmishers myself to counter his archers, or just make archers and say screw it. I don't care if he has archers or not. I'm I was just gonna make my own archers, and I'll I'll match him. I opt to go for skirmishers, and as you can see, I'll pull off these guys from the gold here very soon but something really interesting happens here that i have to talk about so uh, it's a little bit of like meta game um decision making so like because i see him doing archers i want to do skirmishers but because i know that berbers are really good at castle age cavalry so like knights and castle age i know that skirmishers now would not be that the best unit long term so because of that i decide to not actually make too many skirmishers and just get my eco up and start walling up and i want to play crossbows to counter his cav and castle age now this is what i was talking about earlier i can't make pikemen in castle age i simply can't the reason is he has some range units so if i just wall and i want to play pikemen to counter his cavalry at the top level he will make crossbow six to seven crossbow and then he'll still go cavalry so my pikeman will die like completely to the crossbowman and uh, and his cavalry will still get to kill my villagers and raid me so again pikeman not an option just yet but it is a tool in my arsenal to deal with cavalry long term for now i'm just running around the men at arms again just getting some archers uh you know behind all this again focusing more on the walls because i don't want to make skirmishers against them uh, and uh, the reason i know i don't want to play skirmishers is because he still doesn't have any upgrades so He's not going heavy on the archers just yet, or the range units. I can tell by the upgrades. Some water here. Alright, so I see he's got some more range units here. Again, more archers coming forward. And at this point, I'm like, okay, I need to get fletching, and I start making my own archers. I also see a couple skirmishers, so I'm thinking, okay, maybe I gotta add some more skirmishers of my own now to defend that. My men arms were quite useless, but at least they bought me time. So instead of him attacking my base right away, he spent time chasing my men arms. So yes, they're useless in the sense that I didn't accomplish damage with them, but they still bought me some time and that's kind of good. Not the best situation, but kind of good. Uh, if we go to this tab here, we'll see the villager count. I'm one ahead because I'm playing as the Goths. And I got the instant loom. So that's kind of like the eco bonus there for me. Um, and now I'm going to pick up Wheelbarrow and abandon my Barriots because he's pressuring me quickly. So second range coming down just to play with some range units. I do see he's got quite a bit. So Skirmishers and Archer is going to be the key for me here. I'm not going to get Archer Armor just because I, I feel like I don't need it. And I want to kind of save that 100 food for Castle Age. And I have my infantry here. Two Spearmen and two Men at Arms. It's kind of just in case he adds in some scouts later. I have some infantry to defend. I will use my army to defend. But he has more range units right now. So he can probably win this fight if he does take it. So as you can see, I never take a full-on engagement. I always try to just run away. By time, if he runs into me, I'll hit. I'm going to hit and run. Um, but I'm never going to stand still and fight him, obviously. Uh, you know, I got Al Micro there. That's what it is. I'm never going to stand still and fight him because that will for sure lose. Uh, so well played, Daniel. He actually had some really good Micro there. I wasn't really sure what to do at this point. <laughs> a bit sloppy losing a couple archers here. But again, the idea is correct, which is to not fight and just buy time. Obviously, you could do it a little bit cleaner if you're you know, in my shoes. Okay, and at this point, I have no idea where his follow-up will be. He might go Cavalry. He might just go up to Castleage. We, we have to wait and see. Um, we can see by this little tool that he's actually making some archers. I get some nice micro, though. I kill uh, a couple units here, and now I can, I can finally push out and clear him out as I made more skirmishers. So, again, I don't want to overcommit on skirmishers. I go right back to archers after making a few skirms. I just make the skirms to push him back. It's very important you don't overcommit the skirms in this position because you almost guarantee that Berbers will want to go some sort of cavalry in Castle Age because that's their main bonus for the Civ. That's that's what they strive uh, strive at. Uh, strive at, is that the right word? That's what they excel at, I will say. I, I know that's a better word for that. Okay, just to give you guys a little bit of perspective here, because I don't want to just keep you guys crammed on my perspective. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm doing a good job defending, but as predicted, we have a stable transition from Daniel, who's now going to two stables. So he has some range units here to trade against me. But his main plan was always to set up the two stable transition. So I actually read the game really well here. Instead of making skirmishers, I'm making archers. Again, I have to reiterate, I cannot make pikemen just yet because he still has the range units on the field. I can't just make pikes ignoring the fact that he's got range because sure, pikes can, can in some way counter cavalry 
Um, if he has range units, those guys counter the pikemen way harder than the pikemen counter cavalry, so it wouldn't work. I have to keep reiterating this because it's, uh, you know, it's, it's very easy to say, Hera, you know, got to anything she just make pikemen, yo, they're cheaper, but if you think about how the game pl plays out, uh, it's not actually that clear uh, when to do the pikemen switch. Right now, it wouldn't work. Um, and again, that's really why I stress the fact and why I love the series that I, you know, that I, uh, that I do every week is because it really shows the difference between theory play and practical play. In theory, all you want to do is infantry with Goths, but in practice, you don't get that opportunity. It doesn't come up that way. Uh, and you know, you can make the argument as we just trade here, our, our range units, I, I, I think I got the better micro here, but uh, overall he doesn't really care about these, uh, so it's not a big deal for him. I really want to stress the fact that, uh, yeah, like you have the option to do like a Huskrow plus, uh, plus Pikemen to counter, you know, Huskrow to counter uh, range units and then the pikemen to counter uh, cavalry units, but they don't have the eco to afford all of that right now However, that is my long-term strategy and I'll talk about that later. Okay, so now I have the long-term strategy Which is obviously infantry. We knew we knew this before the game even started pretty much but now the short-term strategy is for me to go crossbows and Maybe some boom with some three TCs or maybe some monks to help defend against the knights as well. We'll see How it plays out just kind of clearing out his skirmishers now. I'm kind of sick of losing archers against them. I need to conserve these guys. And at this point, because he is just kind of wasting his skirmishers, I can pretty much say for sure that he will do cavalry transition. At this point, I click his units. I see armor. I see bloodlines. 100% he's going to go cavalry. So even if I don't see his stables, I don't know they're here. I know he's doing cavalry at this point 100%. And before this, it was just a strong suspicion. So that's kind of the situation right now from my perspective. Knowing that... He's going to go for the, you know, the cavalry switch. I make uh, some crossbows, and I want to get two TCs right away. One on the wood, one on the secondary gold. It's always the same thing, chat. If you guys are oh, chat, uh, I'm, used to, I'm used to streaming. It's always the same thing, fellas on YouTube. Uh, it's so much more classy, actually, instead of just like the random chat. Uh, but anyway, it's always the same thing. You always want to get TC on gold, TC on woodline, and castleage if, if possible. Helps you secure some extra gold in case your main one gets pressured. And helps you get some more wood income because that's the most important resource in the early castleage. Uh, wood slash food, I would say. But actually mainly wood because that gets like monastery, which makes you monks. That gets university for ballistics. It gets everything. So wood is probably the most important resource in early castleage, as said earlier. All right, so I have my 3TC set up, and I, I don't know what Daniel's doing. Uh, he could be 3TC behind this, just making a few knights. He can be all in. He can be having a siege rush up here. I actually have no idea, no way to know. So for now, I'm just playing it uh, one step at a time. I'm going to start my boom. I'm going to defend. I make sure he can't get in with some walls. I'm going to clear up the skirmishers where I can to make sure he can't tech into elite skirmisher with a good mass later. And I see the hail's only plus one armor, so I, you know, I try pushing out and getting some damage here, but I have to be careful. I'm not going to push out all the way because if I go all the way to his base, I risk him just cleaning me up with his knights and then me dying. So I'm really playing defensively. And why? I want to get the late game. Goths win Berbers in late game through infantry spam. Halberdier, Huskrow mix, maybe some champion mix as well. I will be able to, be to beat uh, Berbers like that. And so with that in mind, I'm going to just play defensively, not, not try to overstep my bounds. I'm only moving out here because I see plus one. As soon as I see plus two, I mean, you bet your ass I'm running back home. Maybe even inside my town center, we'll see. But uh, I'm gonna be very, very defensive once I see he's got plus two, and, and that, there he is. He goes plus two and he's just gonna run on me. I see it immediately and I run back. I get some good kiting fights in here. The monks are coming out, but he's coming really quickly. And at this point, it's just a question of micro and, and uh, trying to conserve my mass. I try to get a conversion here, but uh, unfortunately, if you guys watch me a lot, you'll know conversions do not really like me, and I don't get any lucky ones these days. But uh, but nonetheless, I'm getting a decent trade. I'm trading his cavalry for, for my crossbows, and notice I'm, I'm gaining a vill lead here. So my economy is probably better. Obviously, I don't know that at the time being. So now I'm just trying to get the best possible trade, and he has a lot of knights, so I have to assume uh, he's um, you know he's investing a lot into that. And you'll see me jumping my crossbows into my into my town center. It's a cute play. Conserve some of those crossbows and uh, kill his knights. And now, monks and crossbows. No infantry on the field. And yet, I find myself with a six villager lead. Just to give you guys a little peek at what he's doing here. He's still massing some knights. And he is booming on two town centers. So I will get uh, a better uh, economy as time goes on. And obviously, again, I have a better late game. However, I don't think I can survive another onslaught of the knights. I have only 13 crossbows. I have a few a few uh, monks, but if he comes again with like his 20 cav now or his uh, you know 15 cav, I think he, he can clear me easily. 
So that's why I'm gonna start doing Pikeman transition. I don't see what he has, but I know he's got a siege workshop and I know he's gonna push me hard. So, you know, that said, I'm gonna get Pikeman transition and this is the perfect time for it because I'm getting to the point where I have a better eco and where the crossbows just don't cut it anymore. Obviously, I don't have thumb ring, so my, my army is not gonna be the strongest. I micro here just because I, well, I don't micro, but um, I try to trade here just because I have bonks to heal me uh, afterwards. So if I take a, a shot or something, it's not the end of the world. Uh, but anyway, I would just go um, pikeman switch with th three barracks now. And this is totally normal because I'm three TC boomed and I have pretty good economy now. So I, I can afford the pikeman transition here. Um, uh, whereas before I couldn't. And now I know that he's doing pure cavalry in Siege. He doesn't have any more range units. And if he does, I have my range units to counter it. You guys see how it came full circle here. Before I couldn't do pikes because he had range units. Now I have the range units. I can do pikes. If he goes range units like skirmishers, I can easily switch into hot scrolls now because I have bigger eco. So there is the there is the stone being mined. Cast is going to be my next step, but first, obviously, the pikemen. And now I'm able to do what goths want to do. So that's just how the practical side of things works, guys. You can't go straight to the best composition. Take a, 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 a baby step first with the crossbows and castle age here and feudal age, and then eventually find your way to infantry. Um, definitely something that can be learned here. I uh, don't want to rush straight into your power unit because it's too predictable and kind of easy to counter at times. Uh, I, I get too fancy with the micro, make a big mistake. He's gonna just pounce on me here. Let's see the fight here, no commentary. All right, couple conversions, just getting allied. We'll commentate a little bit. Couple conversions, not the end of the world for him though. He gets a really good engagement here. But I'm hiding the pikeman until he really commits. Now he commits even deeper. Megan is under my TC and now I show him the fact that I have some pikes. Uh, and uh, and now the pikeman comes perfect time. He gets a really good attack round, but I still have enough to the point where they're able to do damage while my crossbows in the back are also doing damage. And I can thin out his his knight numbers. And and as you can see, the vil, vil count is actually very even here, 74 to 71. Again, we don't know that, but uh, it just shows you guys how close the game is. But now I have the better composition. I have pikeman, and I'm countering his knights. And I have enough stone now for a castle very soon. In the next five minutes, I'll have a castle probably, and um, uh, and I can easily uh, and I can easily take care of any archer transition he does because my unique unit, the Husk Scroll, has a lot of pierce armor and can easily take out um, any archer units he goes for. So that's kind of just the transition and the stepping stone that was uh, the the crossbows that helped me get into this good position. I add now fourth town center. I'm continuing to boom in the back of my base here. I'm just trying to defend myself while massing pikemen and crossbows. And, and now I can move out because I have pikemen to defend myself and monks if I need. But I can actually attack him because I have a good army now. Pikemen defending my crossbows and pikemen at home to defend. And then I'll obviously just wall up here, pick up a university just for that second building to be able to click up to the next age, which is obviously Imperial Age, which is where the goths really start shining. Well, I don't say start shining, but they really, they really shine. I'd say they start shining late castle age, which is exactly where I'm at right now. Vil counts five ahead for me as I'm attacking him. He, his counterattacks are still pretty good, by the way, even through my monks and pikes. But now I can counterattack and I can hit his gold a little bit. And this is going to be hard for him to clear out because I have like eight pikes there and a good amount of crossbow as well. Um, again, he's going to try and, and harass me, but I have like so much pike production and four barracks producing at 20% faster because of gods with cheap pikemen. That's just so hard to push into with knights. So now like he can't really do much. Uh, and he's gonna try and defend his uh, his own base here. Gets like a pretty bad trade against my army, and this is all looking good for me. Everything looks good. I have more bills. I have better composition now. He lost a lot of his you know strong units, and I'm getting the castle down. So even if he switches into skirmishers now, it's too late. I have the hustles down, and I'm ready to win the game through that. So uh, that's gonna be it for this one. GG, well played to Daniel. Thank you for playing me, my man. Uh, he had the third CC only coming up now. Vil count, like I said, was pretty even because he was attacking me quite heavily. But I did what I had to do to defend, get to my power, you know, power spike, which is the cheap pikes, and then end the game by getting a castle and preparing Huskroll plus pikeman spam, and then eventually leading to halberdier plus Huskroll spam. And if he goes champion, I can go hand cannoneer and I can go my own champion. If he goes camel archer, I can go bracer skirmishers, no problem. Goths are pretty flexible at supporting infantry. They can't win a game without infantry. It, well, they can, but it's very rare. However, they can do other things like skirmishers to support their champions or their halberdiers, for example. 
And in that and you know in that way Goths are pretty nice in the late game. They have some decent option and obviously Hussar to raid is always an option too. If for example Husker isn't getting the job done. But that's gonna be it for this episode, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'm gonna quickly show you guys. I said guys like five times. I'm gonna quickly show everyone here watching um, the the stats here before I end off uh, timeline. Obviously, I had pretty uh, you know more pop, but it's pretty even situation at Castledge. I just have more because I have crossbow, and it was pretty even until later on where I just have the better composition. Thanks for watching this episode. Catch you guys later. Peace.